to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Angelica Maria Koch with your educational videos about how to live optimal health and vibrant well-being as I continue to guide you step by step through an amazing and life transformative process empowering you to connect with your body and soul in a completely new way again. So over the last few weeks I got inundated by emails and phone calls from my clients whose children were diagnosed with hand, foot and mouth disease. As soon as the child fell ill or the skin eruption appeared, they were rushing to urgent care or to emergency only to be told, yes, your child has hand, foot and mouth disease, but there's nothing actually we can do. Meaning your child has to ride it out. Although the school system, because it's an infectious disease, suggested that your child should stay at home and shouldn't have contact with any other children. So what to do? Now hand, foot and mouth disease often runs rampant among dear care centers or schools and yes the parents are freaking out, the teachers don't know what to do because it also involves an unsightly skin eruption. Now Orthodox uh, medical side offers more symptomatic treatments, right? We reduce the fever, maybe painkillers for the sore mouth blisters in the mouth or some mouth sprays or mouthwash. But hey, I think we can do much better here, right? So let's have a look first what hand, foot and mouth disease is really about. Do not confuse it with the animal disease, which is called hoof and mouth disease. Hand, foot and mouth disease is really a viral disease and usually it's the Coxsackie A virus. It's not dangerous and really antibiotics do not work here as we know. So don't rush out to and go to the doctor and think an antibiotic will kill this. It won't. It is highly contagious and that's why I would like to educate you about this whole thing. Incubation time is about three to seven days and it's usually followed by a mild fever, sore throat, there can be diarrhea but mostly lack of appetite. Now a day or two later little blisters form in the mouth, it's called herp angina Inside the cheek it can happen and a little rash develops, usually on the hands and foot and I post some pictures up, I don't, they're not squeamish, but just to give you an idea what this actually looks like. They can also appear in other places of the body like the buttocks with a baby for example. But mind you, these eruptions are not itchy and it's often confused with chicken pox or strep throat. Chickenpox is itchy, right? But hand, foot and mouth disease is not. So they're just this unslightly, but they are also when they're in the mouth, painful eruptions. Usually it affects infants and children often below the age of five, but I've seen it with adults as well, but not very often. It's usually uh, symptoms which affects more uh, children. Now, according to the Mayo Clinic, Although your child is most contagious with hand, foot and mouth disease during the first week of the illness, the virus can remain in the body for weeks after the signs and symptoms have actually gone. That means your child can still infect others. That's why we want to really boost the immune system here so the child doesn't have to be such a long carrier for the virus. So what to look out for? Dehydration is a major factor here. Why? Because if the child experiences the sores in the mouth, it's painful, so they don't want to eat, they don't want to drink. So offer the child, you know, liquid as often as possible. Now, since the person is contagious and the incubation period, you know, uh, usually that's before you really get sick, that's the height of the time when you can pass on the virus, treat the whole family, right? Either with immune boosting products, vitamin C or whatever, just make sure that the whole family is looked after as well. Now, do not suppress the fever here because the fever is actually a part of the immune system's natural response to kill the virus. 
Now, I have dealt with this situation countless of times and I can reassure you this can be turned around like that. And I'm saying, you know, clicking with my fingers like that. I've done it many, many times, so nothing to worry about. Uh, young, you know, young parents often really have a hard time with that. There's a lot of anxiety involved, but I can reassure you, you will be a pro after this film. You can do it. It's nothing to worry. If you have natural tools like indicated herbology and homeopathy, uh, as I said, this can be changed very soon. Remember, these videos, with the help of these videos, my aim is to educate you about day-to-day -day common health issues. So you get empowered and totally take back your responsibility, not only to take care of your body, but also it makes you confident to take care of your loved ones, your family, your friends. Right? This, is, this is my aim. On a grassroots level, these videos should educate the masses with very common ailments and how to empower you to meet this in a much more in a natural and effective way. Now, if you want to know, learn, and you know, really go more into it, go to my website mediconova.net and look at my online courses. I offer uh, courses in homeopathy for the whole family, but also for pregnant women, you know, midwives, doulas, anything to do with pregnancy, labor, postnatal care, as well as quantum healing. What's so different about these courses? Not only are they 16 weeks long in depth, but I will guide you personally step by step through the whole material and therefore offer you a personal individual guidance, which you usually do not get with online courses unless you pay a bomb. And I don't want to do this. I want to pass on my knowledge of 30 years in clinical practice to the masses so they can take it back. Okay? Now let's go back to hand, foot and mouse disease. As this is a viral situation, we want antiviral herbs and great homeopathy, right? We want uh, uh, accessible, affordable products which you can get over the counter either in your herbal store, whole food store, you know, look out for it. They're there. Now let's start with some teas. For adults and children, I would suggest lemon balm, which is really lovely here. Uh, go and get the dried herbs, not the fresh one. It takes, tastes like grass. Um, also peppermint, elderberry, rooibos, which is a red tea from Africa. They're all immune boosting um, agents here. Now, as the children usually lose appetite because they have the sores in their mouth, um, they don't want to eat, they don't want to drink, give them broth either chicken broth or beef broth or stock. I also would add some garlic, fresh garlic to it or garlic juice because it's very antiviral and really helps the immune uh, system here. If you have some thyme, sage or rosemary, add that to that too because it really starts healing the sores within the mouth. Now, of course, vitamin C is here important. Echinacea herbal extract Astragalus is very good here as well. Uh, you can get that in supplements or herbal tinctures. Externally, you know, bathe your children in Epsom salt bath with lavender essential oil that really soothes the skin. But on, uh, if you want to do something for um, the little blisters, my favorite is bentonite clay. Uh, it's clay and it's the best natural agent from given us from nature to clear out any toxins on the skin as well as in, internally but here we're talking about skin eruptions it's my favorite you can use it for face mask and anything which has to do with ulcers or skin eruptions make a little paste and put it onto the blisters let it dry and then wash it off if the young baby um, has uh, eruptions around the buttocks, you can sprinkle the powder in the diaper and it sort of absorbs the moisture very, very well. Now, 
Externally, you can also do virgin coconut oil that really soothes the skin in a beautiful way as well. And, you know, make sure because it's a, a viral disease that your child washes the hand regular, that you change the sheets, that, you know, during the time you have to make extra, take extra precaution in order not to spread it around more. Now, for external application for um, the sores in the mouth, I would say calendula herbal tincture or myrrh herbal tincture. That's very nice. Go and get a Q-tip, dab it onto the sores and it heals it very well. Now, to the very, very best. I'm gonna save the best for the last. I'm gonna give you three homeopathic remedies which work like a charm. You can get that at your health food store, a herbal store, they're all over the counter remedies, but they work. If you're not quite sure how many tablets to give, particularly if you have children, email me on info at medicanova.net and I will give you a free advice. Right? This is coming from my heart. This Videos are, as I said, I want you to educate, I want you to go out and, you know, give yourself this confidence that, yes, I can take care of my children's health as well and not just be always dependent on the medical um, that establishment. I give you three remedies, usually the first one will do the trick right away, within 24 or 48 hours. The first one is called Mercurius Solubilis or Mercurius 30. 30 is the potency. It always comes with a number behind that homeopathic remedies. As I said before, they can be in 6 and 12 or 30, but over the counter you will only find the potency 6 or 30. So go and get a 30. Now Mercurius, uh, the sores are very, very severe. They're very painful and the person is very sensitive to hot and cold. And, you know, um, they may alternate between getting too hot, there's a perspiration, or they may be even chilled at night. Even the sores in the mouth, they get worse more at night. The pain is stronger here. Now, the characteristic symptoms is that your child will drool. There's a lot of saliva coming out and the breath is very offensive. You can really see that there is some um, viral proliferation going on within the mouth and it, it really is of it stinks the mouth right the, the sort of breath and uh, there may be some pus on the tonsils and that remedy is I tell you what parents call me up and say what should I do and they give me the symptoms and I say well I suggest Mercurius and you know, although the parents were really anxious and very frightened, I expected a phone call, you know, very shortly after, either to say, hey, it's not working or, you know, I need more help. Nothing. No phone call. Silence. That is a good sign. That means everything is hunky-dory. You know, everything is resolved and that really happens between 24 to 48 hours. The next remedy is called Antimonium Tartaricum 30, or Antart for short. Here we go into the second stage now of the fever. So we have a lot of chills here. There can be goose flesh or an icy cold skin. There can be heat stage of the fever as well. And the important thing is the child really starts to become very clingy and wants to be carried, but also has this paradoxical thing about, you know, don't look at me or doesn't want to be touched. So though it's clingy, it has this feeling like, don't, don't touch me. Now, the tongue is very parched and white, particularly in the center, whereas the outside of the tongue may be clean and clear. So that gives it away a little bit too. So there can be also a craving for apple juice or apples. They really have this particular craving for it. Right? But look at the tongue, and in the middle of the tongue, if you see this whitish parchedness, that uh, goes for Antimonium Tartaricum as well. A third remedy is called Borax, Borax 30. Now here, and you often see it in younger children, we have this almost fungus-like white patches on the inside of the cheek. It can be on the 
inner side of the lips as well, but I've seen it more in the cheeks. Now this is very, very painful. And when the baby wants to suckle, for example, it really, it can't because it's so painful. Now, as I said, when you go to allopathic treatment, there's nothing they can do. And yet if you give borax within 24 hours, 48 hours, the child is perfectly fine. That's how fast it works. So I would say um, the other characteristic with borax is it's more of a mental and emotional symptoms, but maybe it helps you to differentiate between these three remedies. The child has a very fear of downward motion. So you have the baby in the arm, right? And you want to put it down into the crib and it just starts freaking out. It just starts crying. They can't take downward motion, right? Or if you sit in a plane and, oh my God, it goes downwards. That could be borax as well. But that leads us to another subject of homeopathy. But I want you to just to focus on if you see white fungal patches, which you can't wipe away inside the mouth. Um, they also call it yeast maybe. Then think about borax. Really works very well here. So I hope this little video has calmed your anxiety down and really gave you this idea that hand, foot and mouse disease can be treated very, very easily. There's not, nothing to worry about. And as I said, now with these helpful tips, you're like a pro already. You can do it. Now, I appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel uh, so I can give you regular updates. And as I said, it's free and fun. I probably will now travel over the Christmas holiday and um, therefore come probably by the end of the year with a, just a short video thanking you all for your attention and going along with me on this journey of optimal health. I also really thank you for hanging in there with me so far and in the meantime I wish you a peaceful and a sweet Christmas time and let's meet again in the new year. And till then, till next time, much love. Mm -hmm.